Um, members, we are going to need to just um, take some of these as read, otherwise we will literally run out of time. The next item, which is the PRODCOM, um, the, it's all right. the low emissions paper, I'm actually going to take that as read and I'm happy to move sure. it. Is there a seconder? Seconder. Councillor Cashmore, I, I don't oh. think there's too much discussion. Um, so we're not going to take a presentation, just questions. Member Wilcox. Um, <coughs> Have you got any um, information about farms? So through the chair, um, at this point we're collating our feedback on 40, question po 40 questions posed by the Productivity Commission, and we're working with AT, AT, Watercare, and Panuku to do so. Um, and so as of yet, we do not have information about farms that we know of. We might, as we collect information for the official submission. <coughs> Just to you, Madam Chair, I'd like to request a, a copy of the um, application by the Kawanatanga government. To Ki Skiarato. Sure. Request a copy of that. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so this is by way of a series of questions. The PRODCOM usually send a whole ton of questions and then we answer them and that's basically what's being done here. Margoff? Uh, just, just very briefly, I, <coughs> I understand you're answering the questions and I understand this was done in short time and you've only got three overriding themes, but it, it leaves you feeling a little uncertain about where it's going. I presume that you're going to be quite prescriptive about what you think should happen, what we're doing and how you think the government needs to work in with it. Because if it's not prescriptive, then it's if it's only if it's only very general, then it'll be filed and it won't be paid much attention to. I probably I know John and Perrin will want to answer. We've probably been known to be fairly prescriptive to the lists of questions Prodcom offer us. I don't think they often are necessarily that um, happy with what we come back with, but we're certainly uh, very That's directive. That, that probably answers my question. Thank, Thank you. you. We don't hold back, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. One more, um, Member Wilcox. Uh, uh, yeah. Have you it to be? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, could you um, transfer some of that quarter over to, to that IMSP? Yeah. In fact, I presume yeah, that we would do it. it. I'm sorry, it's not here. It's normal practice. We will. Excellent. All right, Wayne. It's a very sharp over. comment, Madam Chair, and that really is the day a change in government is going to be the thing that's going to make the biggest uh, difference. Yeah. Um, I think that's self-evident, and we oh. might well um, modify and strengthen what we say after the election. You could say that. We couldn't possibly comment. I can Thank say you. that. I know, I'm saying you can say that. We Literally couldn't possibly comment now. from the <laughs> chair or the staff. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, right, I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, oh. carried. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John and Karen. Sorry to rush through that. It's, we've got um, Pat waiting and Mace for the facilities priority plan. And I know David Parker, I think David Parker from Active is here. Yes, he is. So welcome. On elections like this, Chris, it's so good. And I see that um, <laughs> Philip and Janet are here. <laughs> it's lovely to have you here. Sorry, we're running a little bit behind time. We'll get to you as soon as we can. So who's going to lead off? Kat. Kia ora koutou, ngā mihi kia koutou, ko Katarai ngā hau, ko Jordan Rawa, ko David Rawa, ko Mace, tēnei. And we'll just start with David. Welcome, David. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I've got a, a very brief presentation just to throw some photographs up on the screen, which would be great. 
um, just to explain through. Um, I'm here to uh, offer my support and that of the sports sector to uh, the recommendation to endorse this plan. Uh, and I'd just like to make a couple of comments, if I could, about how we've gotten to the position uh, that we have got to, and they are supplementary to the report you've already got, so I'm not repeating things that you would already have read. Um, I wanted to comment, first of all, that this um, the, the piece of work that led to this uh, facilities plan being created uh, is one of the most engaged projects that anybody's seen from amongst the sports sector. Uh, you've seen a list of 80-plus organisations who've been involved. Um, and also I wanted to point out Sport New Zealand's commentary that this is probably a, a very mature piece of work. Um, when you consider that there's a range of sports organisations who theoretically compete for investment, um, then their ability to talk sensibly about the need for sound investment in very constrained circumstances has drawn a very positive reaction from uh, national government from Sport New Zealand. It links very nicely, as you will have seen, to the sports facility investment plan, the golf facility investment plan uh, that Council and the policy team have got underway. Uh, and the purpose of the plan is to offer to all funders, including Council, but also uh, people like the uh, major gaming trusts, the charitable trusts uh, that meet as a, an investors forum, um, to see which, uh, what the sports sector itself sees as the priorities for Auckland, uh, bearing in mind that this is not a facilities aim we have. It's, a, it's an aim to meet the objectives of the Auckland Plan, Chapter 5 of the Auckland Sport and Recreation Strategic Action Plan, to have more Aucklanders more, more active and more often, um, and, and to reap the many benefits that we all know accrue to uh, Aucklanders from having sport and recreation and active and healthy lifestyles. Uh, I'm in charge, am I? You are. I am too, that's great. Um, the second key point is that this is going to be um, a very evidence-based um, the plan and the, and the outcomes from it. Uh, the codes have come to realise through, especially through the course of this project, um, that the old, old days of putting up a wish list and hoping that we know somebody who sits around this table who can promote it for us have gone. That actually the criteria that we need to follow have to be very, very evidence-based. They have to be based on known supply and demand, uh, known future um, patterns of, of uh, participation that we can see are happening around us uh, in amongst a, a changing Auckland and a changing ethnic demographic Auckland, uh, changing the way people participate in sport and recreation. Um, so the codes are absolutely recognising um, partnerships, multi-sport facilities, sustainable operations as key things they have to have in mind in promoting projects, and also recognising they have to be under, underlain by uh, very strong evidence uh, to support them. Uh, what will be happening as a result of this plan, though, is there will be an emerging uh, each year will be a number of projects which are very well resourced and very well known. They're codes who have got code plans uh, and, and uh, very well established priorities. There's thinking across the whole city, not just from three or four separate individual groups that purport to represent an individual code. So it will be code wide knowledge. Uh, there'll be excellent evidence. There'll be good knowledge of the spatial. Um, uh, aspects of the plans uh, where in Auckland they need to be and they will have been prioritised they will be seen as a priority for Auckland so we're helping we hope the investors to make good decisions but my final point as you've heard a couple of times today so go forwards not backwards is uh, that if sports got itself ready um, then we're just one part of what needs to happen. So look at the investors, uh, the investors that work with us with Auckland Council. And there's a little diagram in the actual report, not the um, not the facilities plan itself, but on page 51 of your papers, a little diagram that shows this plan fitting with um, the sports facilities uh, and with council. Uh, and it is um, a part of the debate that's on everybody's lips at the moment about where we head with long-term plan uh, and a lot of competing. Um, demands for funding. Uh, but the Council's funding for maintenance for renewals as well as for capital expenditure, which will be the key part of this plan, is absolutely crucial. Uh, and as Auckland grows at the edges and the, the, the growth we know will happen in existing urban areas and recognising changing demographics, increasing numbers of ethnic diversity, the participation trends and the different ways in, people, <coughs> ways in which people do participate, we have to make sure that Aucklanders do get access to the network, well-maintained network, fit-for-purpose facilities in the right places that will allow, allow all Aucklanders to lead healthy, active lives, as is proposed in Auckland Plan Chapter 5 and ASARSAP. And so the LTP is a crucial point for, for us as ever, as it always was, 
but in, in the light of this plan, the 18 to 28 long-term plan is absolutely crucial because it will either unlock what this plan will, uh, will reveal or it can render it meaningless <clears throat> depending on the, uh, the actions that are able to be taken through long-term plan. So um, that's uh, all I had to say on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Should we just go straight and why don't we, I'd quite like us to go straight through all the information then we'll, we'll take questions, John, so we'll make sure you're on the first start of the blocks. Cap, did you want to add? No? Oh, cool. Um, John? Kia ora. Um, the Auckland Sports Sector Facilities Priorities Plan provides a coordinated, integrated, sector-based approach for future sport facility provision in Auckland. This is the sports sector's plan. The development of the plan was facilitated by Active, Sport New Zealand and Auckland Council. The plan responds to the need for a more structured approach to planning and investing in sports facilities due to growing and changing demand. And the plan will allow the sports sector to clearly communicate to council investors and potential partners their priorities for investment. Awesome. Right. So, pretty joined up. Pretty comprehensive. Let's take some questions. John, oh, sorry, Councillor Watson. Yeah, and um, just a question in terms of the plan and the section on challenges and influence, and that goes to for support facilities. Um, I'm a little uncertain as to the potential role or not of development contributions in that. So, for instance, I think of um, <coughs> local parks in my area that councils invested a lot of money in, beautiful playing surfaces getting used increasingly. There's no toilets or changing rooms. I th would have thought under the development uh, development levy that there would be a, the ability to to levy from a di from new developments in that area for the provision of such activities, given that it's going to <coughs> a development segment of of an existing um, asset. Is is that the case or not? Uh, that is the case, Madam Chair. Um, we, we will be through this LTP giving you, um, in terms of the heat maps that we've produced, where we do have growth and, and where we need to provide more of those, those facilities. So, so there's quite a lot of work in that. They're most, limited to changing rooms and toilets yeah. and that core, f core infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, and that's, that's one of the, the challenges that's highlighted here. The, the other one um, that I would make, and I, I know it's not expanded on, but there is a reference in the, in the uh, plan to the fact that it doesn't take uh, account of uh, our stadiums and the investment in our stadiums, but clearly in an in era of very uh, limited capacity, money, big money that goes into stadiums, say 70, 100 million, whatever, it might be going into a particular stadium or, or a new build, that's money that could be getting diverted to the grassroots need that, are, that is clearly established, as opposed to stadiums, which the world over are, are generally in a, in, a, in a state of decline in terms of numbers. So I just put that in there. It's, me, it's mentioned just in passing, Madam Chair, but I'd say that in a, in, a, in a time where money is short, that money that goes one place doesn't go somewhere else. So big sums of money that could in part go to addressing a number of the challenges in here um, could come from some of that stadium investment. Okay. Um, I've got Councillor Casey next. Um, Fifteen of the groups have got their investment plans ready out of the 80. Are all of them in... Uh, have you asked all of them to do that and this is the ones who've done it? Or yeah. how, how is that going to work? Are they all going to have their plans in the end? Um, we certainly see that codes who've not got a code plan will be working towards getting something much more um, strategic and operational ready, ready to be able to use. Uh, the 15 or 16 that have got code plans currently are ahead of the game and already doing implementation of what's a, a much more cogent uh, Auckland-wide plan. Uh, and a strategy to, uh, to achieve their objectives across the whole, uh, the whole city. The ones who are um, ready to go, um, we've probably got another three or four who are looking for investment and assistance um, to, to make that happen. Um, but for codes who are a long way behind, it might be some time before they're able to, to put in a really good case. Um, but that's, that's what they will need to get to to be able to be prioritised. 
Yeah, I, I've got a second question, and I'm just showing a little bit of bias here, but if you were, say, a curling club, and you did curling and you share the ice with ice skaters and hockey players, and oh. so you're really curling on suboptimal ice, how, ca uh, how do you get to a place where you've got the ice you want? Um, it might be very difficult um, in the numbers that are shown, the, the criteria that are shown in this plan. Um, will drive what we need to have by way of the, um, I think, the support required to make that happen. Uh, if it's for a large number of people on a large scale, on a frequent basis, then it will emerge as a priority. So the idea behind the criteria is to allow those um, major priority course. projects to emerge <laughs> more readily. I thought that might be the case. Yeah. We do love them, though, the Curling Club. <laughs> um, Member Wilcox. Uh, I'm happy about this motion for this project. Kita haka motini tini. And to and and to move it. Uh, he pata i taku. Uh, ito wahanga lute koma iwa. In part 23. Ma iwa na kakuru koto. You have mentioned in there about expenditure or budget allocation for marae. Um, faka marama tiatina. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, the detail is not yet determined. It was uh, that was the feedback from the Māori advisory group that uh, this this action team met with uh, as part of the project, uh, and out of that came uh, certainly a view that. Um, places where people recreate and take part in sport uh, are not limited to the ones that are provided by council uh, and so we're certainly looking for other places where people choose to uh, take part in sport and active recreation and that will determine where the investment goes rather than it straight being a council investment on council land. So we're very open to the prospect of of uh, putting, putting forward priorities that might be funded through routes other than the council and might be on land that's other than owned by council. Oh. There are no parai co, a hippie, Kayreda. Correr my anoka. No parai, no parai co. Parai co. Aye, it's the parai. Now, it takes one and I tell you, and I tell you, it's a foot pora, powder. He don't in a iroto in a in a field in no one and a co. Oh yeah. So um, considerations about um, about the, the the paddocks where the where the cows are grazing um, and the use of those areas um, that they might be used for um, football and, and, and other activities. Have you in consideration to those areas? Um, I think, um, as speaking on behalf of sport, um, we'd say we would use anywhere that could be converted or moved or utilised or improved to be able to provide sport and recreation activity. Um, it, it, there is a focus, I think, in this table around what's, what's on council land, quite rightly, but as a sport sector, uh, we're very happy to look at whatever, whoever owns which piece of land to be able to try and use it. Okay. Wilcox. Councillor Simpson. I thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just interested in the process. So you have involved over 80 groups um, to put the plan together, but some sports aren't represented in those groups at all. Mm. So how did you choose the 80, and what happens about the ones that aren't there? Uh, they self-selected. Um, this is There was an invite placed to about 135 different people representing uh, probably about 60 codes, uh, and uh, we ran a series of four times two workshops. Um, so these are the people who came to at least one or more of those workshops. Um, but the invitation was placed to all the major codes and you can see from some of the less well um, uh, participated codes that we did make it quite a wide list. It was to an initial plan of about groups of sports that were identified uh, in early work done by council prior to this plan. Uh, but it was a very wide group that we, and, it's, and it is the widest group that's ever got together to do that, as I mentioned. Supplementary, if I may, I mean, because it's self-selected, are there any groups that we have, uh, that maybe Auckland Council has identified that should have 
selected themselves at heaven. And one of the one of the things that just came to me because you always look at it from your own in your own eyes is BMX isn't here, and yet that takes a lot of land and a lot of space, you know. So it wasn't something that could be incorporated into an indoor facility or something like that. So I just wonder, are you sure that we haven't missed any any group that didn't self-select? Um, I'm, I'm sure we have. Um, and the, this, this is not meant to be a comprehensive, um, a, a, a comprehensive document in that way. We have got the opportunity, I'm glad to say, that we go back because this is an annual process. The, the process that's outlined in here, because it's not a plan that's delivered here, a list of five projects per year for the next ten years. So the process will allow us to go back and pick up groups that have not taken part. So the people who've taken part to this point have put together the criteria and agreed the process and agreed what will happen on an annual basis that will bring projects to the fore. So we do have the ability to go back and collect other people along the way, and BMX is probably a very good example. Hmm. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Good question. Councillor Wayne Walker. Sure. Um, what is the timing of the sports facilities investment plan that's identified in this report? How soon are we going to get there? So the sports facility investment plan draft will be back to you around November. Um, however, <coughs> because of Christmas and January and because of the long-term plan and Auckland plan process, your ability to consult with the public on that might have to wait until after those processes have been gone through as a priority. So we will continue to look at when is the right time to talk to the community, but you will be able to approve the plans and the timing of consultation, being aware of other engagements that Council will be undertaking at the time. Okay. Um, the reason I ask that is it's, it's pretty clear from uh, this report that it's a pretty... Uh, dire situation. Um, there's, there are obviously very significant funding constraints. Our existing facilities are under increasing pressure. We have increasing population. Our development contributions regime is pathetic in terms of the contribution to reserves and what goes on the reserves. There are issues around volunteer uh, capacity. Um, so it's fairly imperative that the long-term plan that's coming up addresses these um, issues. So whatever information there is in whatever draft form, uh, I would suggest, needs to come forward earlier rather than later, Madam Chair. Um, and I am concerned at the lack of synchronisation across um, investment in sport and recreation relative to our long-term plan. I just want to put that on the table. Not easily answered now, Councillor, but your point is very well made. While we concentrate on big infrastructure and the big challenges, this is an absolutely critical part of our budget. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Clough. David, we, um, we have a dilemma here, um, and I like your feedback because I know your background in football, So, but we have rugby and league and football and netball by and large get facilities offered to them for free. Um, certainly all the greenfields and netball, um, there's only the four or five main centres. What is the, um, and of course all those fields, especially the greenfields that rugby league and football use, um, are actually double as public parks as well, and there's a lot of active recreation going on. Yet we have all these other facilities indoor where by and large the codes and the participants have to pay what is the what what is active's view on that because obviously that would have been an item of discussion one assumes when the codes have got together and say well you get it for free and we would have to pay and etc can you give some feedback because we have got do we reintroduce charges for the grass fields uh, for the codes that use grass fields um, that is something we are having to grapple with I'm, I'm happy to reply um, by saying I wonder, that... David, just before you do, I, I just... I might give you yep. a moment. Yep. Councillor Clough... That's a good is, question. It is a very good question. <laughs> it is a very good question. I just want us to have the right discussion at the right time, though, but like planting the right tree in the right place. We are going to be coming back with a very clear report on charging for sports fields and we've signalled that and I think we need to have that discussion rather than put active in a position of going yes or no. Can we 
hold that, because you've gone right to the heart of the challenge that we're facing, can we just hold that question and have that discussion at the right time? Because I'd hate to foreclose yeah. Yeah. on the opportunity to have that discussion. That's fine. Will ACTIV be it, involved? Um, yes, absolutely. So, yeah. okay. Absolutely. They are firmly our respected partner, and we could not do that without them. So, um, <coughs> well, they are, whether we, you know, agree or not. They're a good regional partner, yep, councillors. Yep, I don't go for it. Um, so, let's move on to Councillor Hills. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is a, a good report. <clears throat> but um, just a couple of questions around equity, and it probably is around that sports field, the more funding side of things, you know, for instance, the... North Harbour Netball, you've heard it a thousand times, don't get operating funding. So when we're starting on a future model and there it's about future provision, what are we doing to level the playing field, pardon the pun, um, backwards a little bit as well? Um, and the other thing is, um, how do we make sure that it's, everything's kind of fit for purpose for the area? So, you know, I hear um, Councillor Watson saying around changing rooms, but there's actually a lot of feedback in our area that Actually, we don't, unless there's a club rooms where you're going upstairs to have a drink and a meal afterwards, yeah. most people just yeah. leave after the game. They don't need to shower and sure. change at the, and we could it's be spending millions of dollars on changing rooms in an area that doesn't need it. So, so, so generally, you've had um, many of these discussions in this committee, uh, specifically in terms of the development of the sports investment plan. You have made decisions in principle, about whether you will fund toilets and changing rooms in the future. Um, that will come back in the plan for you to see and consult on. You have had discussions about what things DCs fund, as raised by Councillor Walker, and what they don't. We have had discussions about the different ways, different codes of, are supported by us, the different financial instruments we use. And you had a very robust discussion on what future financial mechanisms you want to use to do that at just at our last meeting, actually, last month. So that will all come back in the draft investment plan for us to consult with our sector partners but and with communities. So one of the things you want us to do is not only consult with the sector around how do they feel about this code being funded this way and this code that way, but what impact does that have on parents with four or five children and if we change the mechanisms what impact will have on their ability to play sport and inequalities across the region between those who can afford it and those who can't. So I suppose I'd say you, you've all had quite robust discussions about that and we can bring that together with you. I suppose the key thing about this plan is investment approach we have as many of the sports sector as we can trying to work as much as they can with your investment plan so that hopefully we can prioritise because as we all know with limited funding we're highly prioritised in terms of where we can invest. Cool, thank you. Hmm. Thank you Councillor Hills. Okay, right, I think that might have clarified everything for everyone. I don't see any more speakers, so I'm going to put the recommendation. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you very much, and thank you, um, particularly thank you to ACTA for your excellent work thank in you. this area. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. That'll be seconded by Councillor Fess. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just giving you a little wind up there, my <laughs> brothers from the south. Um, <coughs> I. Now, I'm just wondering if we could take this paper as read. It is a paper that's coming to us to tell us um, that we are now going out for...